Hi, everybody. Good afternoon. I guess it's afternoon for all of us now. Um, my name is Shali Suniga. I'm from Mexico and I'm a doctoral candidate in art education and women's gender and sexuality studies at Penn State. So the presentation that I've prepared for you today is meant to unearth the work of um, an extraordinary Latin American woman artist called Claudia Bernardi. Uh, in spite of, her undeniable import of the undeniable importance of her now extensive trajectory in the arts and in the, re in the realm of social justice, her work has not received the recognition that it merits, which is not uncommon. Um, so Claudia Bernardi uh, personally experienced a brutal political order that the Videla dictatorship enforced on the Ar Argentinian pe people in the 1970s, specifically in 1976, when the military di dictatorship took power in Argentina, Claudia was still a student at the University of Art in Buenos Aires. She says, those were very dark years, very tragic, painful, and violent. The ones who survived learned to look at life, history, and art quite differently, she states. So Bernardi's work has a long history of using different media to voice out the horror that still reverberates in the collective memory of not only Argentina, but of the entirety of Latin America as a result of the numerous mass murders of civilians orchestrated by US-backed military juntas throughout the late 70s and 80s in the Southern Cone. Bernardi sees the possibility of celebrating life after genocide and believes in the power of artistic creation as a form of historical rectification, which echoes a famous post-Auschwitz dictum pronounced by Theodore W. Adorno in 1967 where he stressed the importance of art as a means of overcoming the barbaric state of modern hegemonic culture. Did it change? Just to make sure that you're not staring at the same, well, I'll, I'll carry on and if anything, I'll check the chat. You're good. Um, okay, thank you, thank you. Uh, mm, so Claudia Bernardi is a socially engaged and community-based artist as a means to introduce her. She's a printmaker and installation artist, as well as a professor of community arts at the California College of the Arts in Berkeley. She was born in Buenos Aires, Argentina in 1955 and lived through what is known as the Dirty War. Bernardi's work has had a large impact internationally, even though she is currently not featured on Wikipedia, at least not until today. Um, but her work thrives in the intersections of community art, critical pedagogy and forensic archeology. span her purpose as a socially engaged artist is to promote a new vision of human rights and socially um, justice-based futurity in places that have been deeply and negatively impacted by state-sponsored violence. I've had the immense privilege of being in communication with her as a result of having researched one of her prints called Ser Mujeres Sabe Resistir or Being, woman, being a Woman is Knowing How to Resist which uh, I'm showing here um, for in this slide, that is currently part of the Femme Folio series of the Palmer Museum of Art's uh, personal, um, um, no, private print collection. Bernardi has shared with me important information about the experience and nature of the community art projects she has conducted in collaboration with survivors of politically orchestrated atrocities, which include massacres, tortures, sexual violence, and forced exiles during armed conflicts. As I came to learn from our exchanges, Bernardi's engagement with forensic anthropology as a means to help communities process the trauma of violence and human rights violations began in 1992, when Bernardi first accompanied the Argentine Forensic Anthropology Team, or what is known as the EAAF, in the investigation of a 1981 massacre at Del Mozote in El Salvador in Central America. According to Rufina Amaya Marquez, the sole survivor of a massacre, the Salvadoran army murdered more than a thousand civilians on the 11th of December of 1981. The forensic team found the remains of 143 people, 136 of whom were children under the age of 12. And as Bernardi explains, those children could have not been combatants, not at age five. After her experience of collaborating with EAAF in El Salvador, Bernardi was left to deeply ponder upon her role as an art maker after the horror of what she had witnessed during the exhumation. She writes, surprisingly, I do not feel the ghost of depression, rather the opposite. I feel a wave of energy, an urge to act. I had been for three months exhuming children and exhuming evidence of something so tragic I could hardly imagine possible. And then 
I had to come here to the United States where I live. And there was something that I could not resolve, but something within myself told me that whatever the pain was or whatever the enormity of it all could be remedied with a creation of art. So Bernardi's work direction suffered an enormous shift from then on as she began exploring how art can be used as an instrument of peace. In response to the horrors that she witnessed at El Mosote, she decided to use art as a means to redress the, the magnanimous failure of humanity to perform itself as humane. Bernardi's personal connection with the experience of El Mosote massacre is inevitably and directly connected to the larger historical and political role that Latin America played during the Cold War. For example, El Mosote massacre happened at the height of the Salvador and Civil, Civil War, which lasted from 1980 until 1992. The Civil War was a product of the post-World War II geopolitical struggle for US territorial expansion, facing Soviet resistance. When the Cuban Revolution, um, 1953 until 1959, established a communist government with ties to the Soviet Union during the Cold War, it was argued that the Monroe Doctrine should be enforced to prevent the spread of Soviet-backed communism in Latin America. Under this rationale, the U.S. provided intelligence and military aid to Latin, to Latin and South American governments that claimed or appeared to be threatened by communist subversion, as in the case of Operación Condor or Operation Condor. Subsequently, U.S. foreign policy enforcers helped install brutal coups and dictatorships in most of the countries that comprise the Southern Cone, including Argentina, Bolivia, Brazil, Chile, Paraguay, Uruguay, El Salvador, um, to name a few. To explain further, the Monroe Doctrine, coined in 1823 by US President James Monroe, was an effort to grant and maintain US hegemony over Latin America as a natural extension of the Messianic ideological impetus that fueled the idea of manifest destiny and US exceptionalism. The Monroe Doctrine served to justify any violent political measures on behalf of the US, meant to ensure that European powers kept their distance from Latin American resources and territories, unless approved and supervised by the US administration. So within this larger framework, Operación Condor or Operation Condor consisted in a United States-backed campaign of political repression and state terror involving intelligence operations and assassination of opponents officially and formally implemented in November 1975 by the right-wing dictatorships that were installed all around Latin America. Consequently, the Dirty War, or La Época de los Desaparecidos, or La Guerra Sucia, as we call it in Spanish, was the time during which Bernardi studied art in Argentina. And this resulted directly from the workings of Operación Condor. The Dirty War is how we call the United States-backed military junta that terrorized Argentina from 1976 to 1983. During this time, military and security forces and right-wing death squads, officialized as the Argentine Anti-Communist Alliance, or the AAA, hunted down any political dissidents and anyone believed to be associated with socialism, left-wing Peronism, or the Montoneros movement. As a result of this war, 30,000 people disappeared. We say in Spanish, fueron desaparecidos. They didn't just disappear, they were disappeared, of whom many were impossible to report formally due to the nature of state terrorism. The actual targets of, of Operación Condor were students, militants, trade unionists, writers, journalists, artists, and any citizens suspected to be left-wing activists, including Peron, Peronist guerrillas. The disappeared, which is what we call the victims of the war that were uh, people that were kidnapped, tortured, and murdered, and whose bodies were made to disappear by the military government included those individuals thought to be politically or ideologically a threat to the dictatorship, even vaguely. Many of these people were killed because of their stance against the neoliberal economic policies dictated by Operación Condor. The killings were an attempt by the Junta to silence the social and political opposition from all angles. Many members of the Junta are currently in prison for crimes against humanity and genocide. Introducing this background into our historical consciousness is crucial to understanding why Bernardi's work is so particularly valuable and why her story as an Argentinian woman survivor is directly tied to the lives of the people that were murdered in El Mosote, El Salvador. In fact, it is important to mention that the EAAF, or the Argentine Forensic Anthropology Team, with whom Bernardi traveled to El Mosote, was assembled in direct response to the Dirty War in an effort to investigate human rights violations in Argentina and worldwide 
EAAF was established in 1984 to investigate the cases of at least 9,000 disappeared people in Argentina under the military government that ruled from 1976 to 83. Because of how effective the work that this organization has been in terms of providing scientific proof for identifying remains of the disappeared in 1992 after the 12 year civil war in El Salvador, uh, the UN Truth Commission nominated the EAAF to perform the exhumation of the victims of the massacre at El Mosote Morazan. In Penelope Price's filmic testimony of Bernardi's work, there's a diegetic question that asks, how does it feel to love a skeleton, Claudia? To which Bernardi responds, it feels like El Mosote. Bernardi's involvement with exhumations connects larger histories of victims of state violence around Latin America, shedding important light into the political importance of remembrance and the arts as crucial entanglements for overcoming collective trauma. She has made installations and prints to incorporate materials from the exhibitions in which she has been involved to help the viewer think through the materiality of disappearance and the weight of the silence that comes after mass death. As an artist working in community, my art lives in the intersection of art and war, writes Claudia Bernardi. Her experience of working at the Mosota inspired her to change, to engage further with El Salvadoran community in an, in an effort that led to the founding and developing of a larger ongoing mission to link art, education, and social justice in the country and beyond. That is how the School of Art and Open Studio of Perkin was born, as an international art and human rights project involving education, diplomacy building, and community, community development. The school was founded in Perkin, Morazan, in 2005, and is currently run by Salvadoran artist educators working directly with Bernardi and the surrounding community. This project led to the mural making project called Walls of Hope, which captures Bernardi's mission to use art to engage and build community with those who were once victims of torture, political and sexual violence during times of armed conflict. Participants work collaboratively to create the themes and to thread images that speak to their collective memory and desired futurity. What is this mural about? Bernardi asks them. What would you want to leave as a message? Pictures spill from their hands and as memories and self-respect are recovered upon the walls, drawing together becomes a form of communal weeping for healing. Murals, Bernardi notes, are books with no words. Walls of Hope is now expanding its art and community-based activities beyond El Salvador. One of the most relevant aspects of the School of Art and Open Studio of Perkin is the creation of art projects developing what is known as the Perkin model. The Perkin model works as a blueprint of replicable art projects that can be done in similar contexts to El Salvador. It is a nomadic project that has produced uh, a lot of works in Canada, in the United States, in Guatemala, Colombia, Ireland here, and Switzerland, to give some examples. The mandate of the Perkin School is to create bridges of collaboration through public art projects, site-specific interventions, and weekly classes in painting, drawing, sculpture, uh, educating children, youth, and adults in the skills of the visual arts. The school's, visual, the school's vision is to add people's efforts towards education, diplomacy, community development, and the recovery of historical memory. So to conclude, I hope this presentation contributes to my knowledge produces that art can be effective in exposing state-sponsored human rights violations, but more importantly, in recuperating the joyousness of life, even in the face of absolute death. This is a lesson that we need in the present Knowledge producers, artists, academics, etc., have the responsibility to pave the way into society's transition into a new phase of history. One that, despite having been founded in a moment of violence, uncertainty, and destruction, such as the one that we find ourselves in with this pandemic, can bring about the conditions for a bravely kind, dignified, and more loving way of life. Art that is brave enough to voice out the truth that some forms of death conceal can help us come to regard life differently, and that is precisely the art of Bernardi. As she writes, I make art while thinking about the immense privilege of being alive. To come to the blank sheet of paper is to arrive at a safe island, at an intimate space where images develop in an alchemy of colors that hide and reveal themselves through the innumerable layers of pigment. I make art while remembering I make art while missing people, places, fond spaces, beloved names. Bernardi's art evidence is how we can in fact change our socio-political system for the better, emphasizing the importance of cultural creation. Finally, her efforts are directed at, I quote, 
going from the darkness into hope of something better, trying to make sense of what we see, and as artists, recording all that passage. Uh, thank you. <laughs>